All set? Yes. Good evening and welcome to the November 4th, 2008 school board meeting, Election Day. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Alan, do you have some adjustments to the agenda? I do have a few quick adjustments that are just mainly informational. Under recognition E, I would like to mention one of our guidance counselors who has been chosen uh, for membership in the National Association of College Admissions, so I'll do that at that point in time. Under uh, communications, uh, F is just to review with you that Scott Shea is doing his annual trip to Richmond Island, and you do have that document in front of you. Uh, G, uh, we do have a second bus a driver resignation from Judy Gray, and so I just will do that quickly. And I also just want to remind people about the World Language Lecture Series, the next one, which is November 20th. So those are the only quick ch uh, changes I have so that they will be on our minutes. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, approval of school board minutes from September 9th, 2008. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the school board minutes from the October 14th meeting as presented. Thank you, Trish. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Discussions, arrows, omissions? Okay. All in favor? 4 0. Thank you. Um, comments from student representatives? I don't think we have any. Do we, Steve, have any of yours? No? Okay. Great. We'll move along. I know the high school um, <laughs> folks are... One, one, is, one is watching the elections tonight for their class, and the other is final preparation for the play. So they're both tied up tonight. There we go. However, one sent his mother for us, so she'll, she'll speak to some okay. other issues. Okay. Well, that'll be good. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, number four, comments from public on non-agenda items. Is there anybody from the public here for a non-agenda item? No? Okay. Uh, recognition, 5A, Eric Nielsen, fourth grade teacher. And what I, w I have asked Eric to be here tonight uh, for recognition because of the uh, work that he has been doing with Pond Cove teachers around technology. I know he's been doing some great things, and so I asked him if he would speak to it tonight and let us know some of the things that he is helping Pawn Cove teachers with. Great. Thank you, Eric. Well, thanks for inviting me. Um, I guess I saw the need at our school. We have uh, lots of good technology, but not a lot of knowledge on how to use it to its fullest extent. So uh, Sherry Robinson, our teacher leader, approached me. She's kind of like my agent. and. Uh, <laughs> She said, you know, this would be good. I think you should do this. We did a poll of the teachers, and um, the first topic that we did was how to create a teacher website. We had about 20 teachers attend that over three or four sessions, which was great. And um, I kind of checked up on them, which was easy to do, because I told them I was going to go to their website and see what they had done. And they all have a, a pretty good website, and I, I taught them how to um, put the various pieces in it, links to different things. But mostly it was just about communicating to parents and, and community, and how it was a great way to save paper, but it was also an instant kind of communication. I taught them how to put on audio and video. I showed them my website where my students uh, do a news video every week. And uh, so that's how parents get the news of what goes on in our classroom. Lasts about five minutes or less. And so we did that. They were quite happy to do that. Incorporating pictures. Um, they've had a lot of feedback over the past few weeks. I've talked to them. And you know, most of the parents say they love it. They go to the websites. They learn a lot. Then we started in on some of the other things that people wanted to know. Um, mostly di digital movie making to use in the classroom was a big one. So I did a few sessions on iMovie, which is just the Apple's brand of digital movie making. And I used regular video cameras, and then I taught them how to use a still camera to use as a video camera. Because most teachers or grade levels have a digital camera sitting somewhere. Some team member has it. Usually it's a team leader. 
and you can run and get it, but you can't always run up to the media center to get a movie camera. So I've been teaching them how to do it just with a simple little still camera, and um, that's been very successful. That's where we are now, and in the future we have, um, teachers want to know more about Garage Band, which is a, an audio music mixing creation thing, program, and um, I really don't know where we're going to go because it's all teacher driven. I mean, I have some ideas, but I really plan it on what do you, what do you want to know? What are you interested in? So if we can get three or four teachers to come each, and we do it usually on Mondays, um, that's, that's what we do. Very it's been good. very successful. And so I, I, from the board, I'd like to thank you very much for that work. I think it's very important work, and I think it helps us also keep the focus on technology and how technology works for us, both within the classroom, <laughs> but also with parents, et cetera. Yep. And so I thank you uh, for that work. I know that uh, Trish had also mentioned that she had talked to people about it, and I don't know if Trish had any comment about it as well or not. But, uh, no, just to reiterate the thanks, I know you're doing that on your own time, so we appreciate it. Right. I'm actually getting recertified to do it, which is great because, um, you know, it's not costing any money, which is always a good thing. And, um, but it's, it's a real kick for me, I have to say. Like, I've never, I've done a few things with teachers in the past or adults, but it's a real, just really a fun time. I get to know them, but also, you know, we, we bond in certain ways and we find out things about each other. And it's been an a incredibly successful just experience, just for me. Usually I'm tired at the end of the day, but on Mondays, I'm not. It's just great. That's so. great. Super. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank Eric. you very much. Really appreciate that. It's nice to have somebody who will give their time and help us get a little more organized. Great. Um, Gary, ACTEM conference. Could you just give us a little overview of how that went, since you are one of the leaders of that process? Uh, ACTEM, that's ACTEM, Association of Computer Technology Educators of Maine. It's, it's a group of people like me, tech coordinators, directors, but also teachers and tech integrators. Uh, used to be president of the association. I'm now chairing the conference. This last conference that uh, Trish went to, we had almost a thousand people in the Augusta Civic Center on Friday. I was, as chair of the conference, I was concerned and, and worried with the downturned economy. Would we get a turnout, get the people there? Uh, but we did get the people there. Um, brought in national speakers dealing with technology, and uh, we, ha we have a lot of local people that give presentations, 16 sessions times four, so there's tons of things that people go to. People usually get inspired and really charged up about going back and using technology in the classroom, and, and that's what it's all about. I've been doing it for the last three years, and uh, it, uh, a lot of our Cape Elizabeth staff go to it, and uh, I think it helps not only them, but other staff around the state. So that's what it's all about. And I'd like to thank you also for the work that you put into it. And Trish, I know you were quite excited about it. I it, it was terrific. And I, I first have to say again, thank you. And I was impressed that you were able to be one of the organizers of this, as well as being overworked here in Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, a, it was really, it, there were a lot of exciting ideas. I think every, the energy level was, was really high. And it, again, it's a great opportunity for people to talk to people outside of the, their own districts. But um, it's just really exciting, some of the things that are happening, happening in education and to sort of be able to talk about that. I'm sure for our, the teachers as well, it was a great opportunity to be outside of the classroom and talk about, sort of ex expand your mind a little bit. Right. So thank you for your work on that. Okay. Thank you, thank you Gary. Uh, teachers' CEF grant proposals? Uh, unfortunately, uh Karen was going to speak about that because she served on that committee, but she's not here. Okay. The only thing that I will, will mention is what I understand is we had well over $70,000 worth of requests. I, my recollection was about $79,000 worth of requests, and we had a little over $20,000 worth of money. So I know that all the presentations have been, been done. I know that uh, uh, Tom went to present with Gary on the uh, data processing program. 
Uh, I talked with them about high school, uh, virtual high school, and I know there are a lot of teacher ones, but I don't know where that next step is. And uh, Karen was going to kind of catch us up with that. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, fall athletic summary. Is this Jeff Thorak? This is Jeff. I did notice when I voted today, there seems to be a large grouping of bleachers <laughs> yes. in place. So, and we'll be able to talk a little bit about that after the summaries. Um, hard to imagine, but we are uh, wrapping up our fall athletic season. And um, just like to start off by congratulating all of our student athletes, middle school and high school, for a terrific job this fall. Um, Really, I, I, I continue to be inspired, amazed, impressed with the, the work, the time, um, the sportsmanship that we see, and the perseverance that our student athletes continue to, uh, to accomplish and succeed. Um, and uh, it's been truly, truly uh, an incredible first fall here, and I'm so happy to be part of it. So. Um, to our student athletes, uh, thank you and, and congratulations on a fine fall. And um, I'd like to use this time real quickly too just to thank a couple of people because there's so much that goes into athletics. I think um, with all the organization and the personnel required, um, I'd just like to take just a couple of minutes just real quick and thank first and foremost all of our coaches and our volunteer coaches that put their time and effort in um, on top of their um, jobs and, and families that they, they also um, try to balance so uh, they do a fine job they're excellent role models and um, really instrumental I think in our success in our programs at, at Cape Elizabeth um, also uh, thanks to our booster organizations and our timers announcers and all the game personnel uh, that's required um, and uh, again I think the amount of work and the support uh, for the for our programs from our community is really um, really impacts our programs in a, in a very positive way and um, it's nice to know when we have multiple events going on which occurs quite frequently that uh, everything is in good hands and I can rest assured that um, we will get things off on time and, and uh, hopefully without any conflicts but uh, rest assured um, that's nice to know that we have great people working with our with our kids um, and then finally, I think just real quick, thank you to uh, Scott Labby for his work with the middle school um, and working with community services and Janet and um, Susan Ray for her help with my transition into my new position. So without further ado, um, a little bit about our teams this fall at the high school level. Um, our cross country teams, boys and girls, um, just recently participated in the state final. Um, our girls placed first at the state meet at the Class B and also first in all of our classes, so A, B, and C. So that was a, a really excellent performance on their part. And our boys placed second at the states, and that was at Belfast last week. Uh, they finished fourth overall, and they also qualified for uh, the New England, uh, New England Invitational, which will be this weekend at Gary Field Park in Manchester, New Hampshire. So that was very impressive performance there. Our field hockey team... Um, they were seated eight, and that was decided on a coin toss this year. Uh, Lake Region and Cape Elizabeth both had the same heel points, and we had to flip a coin with a conference call with the main principals association, and we won that coin toss, so that was nice. So we were able to host a prelim with them. Um, Lake Region did end up uh, beating us in the prelim. However, they also knocked off the number one seed, Levitt. And um, so they were a very, very good team, and uh, we were happy to, to play a team of that caliber. Um, our girls' soccer program, they were uh, seated 12th in the playoffs. Um, their first prelim game was against Scarborough and knocked off the number five seed Scarborough. And then they played Greeley in a quarterfinal. Um, lost to Greeley, who was a very talented program as well, and a big rival, and um, the girls played very well. Our boys' soccer team, was a fifth seed in the playoff. They also had a very strong performance, uh, not only in the regular season, but in the playoffs as well. They had very um, commanding victories over Bonnie Eagle, um, Thornton Academy, and just narrowly beating uh, Scarborough in a 
in a semifinal match at Scarborough um, over on last Saturday, and uh, Scarborough was a number one seed. So, a very talented group. Our volleyball team. First, like to uh, just point out that we were finally able to officially host our var first year varsity program. Um, it took us a little while, and I'd like to thank um, Rob, Thons Rob Thompson, the head coach, and the girls and, and our parents for their patience and, and, and support and understanding for uh, having to play a few of our games, most of our games, on the road while this, uh, the installation of the new uh, stanchions were in place. Um, but once we got that in and we hosted our last three games, uh, it was very exciting and uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing their progress in the future. And we also, our football team just finished their regular season, um, and that was at Mountain Valley, and uh, quite an experience. That was my first football game at Mountain Valley, and uh, we will hopefully be traveling up there again in a couple of weeks. Before that, though, we have, uh, we'll be hosting York High School on Saturday, and um, the good news is we've been assured that we'll be able to spectate from new bleachers, so that's exciting. And uh, really looking forward to uh, watching that game. I think it's going to be a, a neat event and um, should draw a lot, of, a lot of support and a lot of um, spectators from both sides. And then finally, um, last but not least, our golf team finished fourth, just narrowly um, missing the qualifications for the states. Um, they take three teams from our conference, and I think the Western Maine Conference that we belong to and that we compete in, it's one of the strongest golf programs um, in the state, and uh, our guys did a fantastic job. Um, we did have uh, one student qualify as an individual, Sean Eubanks, um, to compete in the state final. And I just had a quick email that I want to read because I received a, a really, really nice note from uh, a Falmouth coach. And basically, he starts out by kind of explaining the state meet and how things were going and talking a little bit about Sean. And then stated um, on the last hole, it was evident that he would be in the money, a golf quote. Um, but our player, Jack Wyman, had a great chance to possibly win. Jack had a 10-footer or so for a par, and Sean had a 9.5-footer. Uh, Jack was to putt first. However, Sean walked forward and said, hey, Jack, let me show you the line. And he putted first, helping out Jack. Sean was, uh, wasn't happy about his own plight, but put aside and helped out his opponent, uh, who, whom he had respected. It was a class act, and it goes on to state, for me, winning is great, but sport, good sportsmanship is exhibited by Sean is the best. Um, and again, that was from Spike Herrick, who was the Falmouth High School golf coach. So um, it's always nice to hear those positive and uh, true sportsmanship acts in, in competition. And, and golf is one of those um, athletic events where we don't have officials, and the kids self-officiate and um, and they just do a tremendous job and work well together. And um, to get e to receive emails like this, really, it really made my day. And um, sent a nice note back to Falmouth, and it was very nice to for Falmouth to uh, send a nice note like that. And that is the bit of the fall report. What I will do um, is start compiling a lot of this information and um, especially when all of our conference awards come out and um, put together all of our team standings and I will uh, submit that to uh, the school board as well and um, put that on our website. I think our kids and our teams do some fantastic things and they really deserve to have that uh, highlighted and uh, show the community that we, all of the great things our kids do. Oh, on that golf too, I would like to thank um, Perputic and their members for allowing us to use their facility. Um, very accommodating, and uh, we're very thankful for, for that opportunity. And do you want me to talk a little bit about the bleacher? Or? Why don't we move to the bleachers while sure. we have them as a captive audience right up there? Sure. Why don't you go ahead? OK, and then, like as I mentioned, um, we bleacher project had a little bit of a delay, but um, as a, I think with a project of this size, things like that happened. Um, they were able to get all the steel and aluminum up. Uh, for the for the seating, we did have a little bit of a delay with the riser portion, and that was the that's the section that had the color, um, and the maroon wasn't quite the right match. So those were sent back at the installer's cost, and um, 
they will be here tomorrow. And they are guaranteeing us <laughs> installation on Thursday. <laughs> so, um, and I've seen the guarantees coming in, so we all hope they're right. Exactly. So we're, I think it's going to be amazing. The press box is also will be installed on that day. I guess they're bringing quite a crew um, just to get this piece taken care of. Currently, they're, they have a project going on right now in Dartmouth as well. So um, after this, the, they'll finish up with some electrical, quick electrical work, which was started today. Um, do some finish work on the grounds and um, put back our outside fence. And we should be set for a, a walk through with um, Mr. McGovern and um, Robert Malley uh, on Friday and be able to sit and have some excellent vantage points as a spectator on our new bleachers. So uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. It's, uh, it, it's, it's truly impressive as you drive down to the high school and you see that structure. Um, it is quite a, quite a sight. And, um, I've had some interesting conversations with a lot of community members just saying, um, especially the ones that have grown up in the town and s wished for this for so long, and to see that site, I think it really, for some it really was an emotional time, it really brought a tear to some people's eyes, and uh, um, it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for us to come together as a community. So, I, if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to help in any way. What I would like to do is just to say thank you to Jeff. Uh, this has been a, a start for him at public school. It's been an interesting process, and he's done an excellent job. And I hear over and over again from people in the community how much they enjoyed working with him during this first season. And so I really want to express my thanks to Jeff and all the work that he's put in. It's sometimes hard to take the place of somebody who's been here for 30 years, but Jeff well, is doing a great you. job with it. Thank you. So thank it's you. a pleasure to be working here in this community. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Project graduation. What I would do just quickly is go back to the last piece, the new piece I added about Brandy LaPointe. Okay. Uh, I did receive word that Brandy is one of our guidance counselors at the high school, mm -hmm. and she has received some honors last year from the National Association of College Admissions and this year she has been selected for the board membership of the College Admissions Counselors which is a great honor for her and so I wanted to be sure that the board and the community knew uh, what she is bringing to uh, Cape Elizabeth High School with this honor. Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations Brandy. Okay. Now Project graduation. Project graduation. We have a senior class who will be graduating in the spring. Right now, because they're all praying for snow days and as many as I can give them, but uh, we'll, we won't worry about that right now. But they have been the group that uh, raises money for Project Graduation came to see me last week. They have finalized their plan. As you know, the, the actual facts of the plan are kept very secret until it's time to go. But they, they are very pr proud of themselves and the work they have done. They have managed to plan the project graduation at a much lower rate than they spent last year. But it, also, but it has all kinds of opportunities in it. They will not be going more than 125 miles. They will not be staying overnight. So therefore, I do not have to get your permission. But just to inform you that they are there and they, they are very proud, I think, of the work they've done to get ready for this. And so I wanted to be sure that was mentioned to you, and you would know that they are moving ahead rapidly to get ready for June, which unfortunately, this is only November, but boy, that June will be here before we know it. So we'll be ready for it. Thank you, Helen. Um, 6C, Attorney General Rose, yes. call to action on underage drinking. Uh, I will mention just briefly that uh, HOPE, which is a new committee uh, here in Cape Elizabeth, uh, invited Attorney General Stephen Rowe to meet with people in the communities, particularly high school parents, in a call to action on underage drinking. Uh, I need to say to you that I went over to the meeting, I went through the doors of the cafeteria, and I almost passed out when I walked in and saw over 200 people there, which I think was amazing. So I did ask Nancy Pizzullo, who is the chair of the committee, if she would come in and talk about it for a few minutes and the process they went through. And I would say what it meant to her and to the committee to see this kind of response. Nancy. Great. Thank you. 
This is our Prezzulo representative for the <laughs> yes. evening, since Andrew's not here. I take no responsibility for door. Andrew. <laughs> uh, thank you for inviting me here uh, this evening to report on this event. Um, it was our kickoff event for our new community action team, um, HOPE, which stands for Healthy Outreach for Prevention and Education, um, primarily focusing on growing concerns about um, substance use and abuse in our community. Um, we've been working together as a group for the last six or eight months or so, and um, as I said, this was sort of our first public event. Uh, we had the opportunity to have um, Attorney General Rowe come and speak to us, and it was sort of a short-term um, decision. We had to make a very quick decision, so we didn't have a lot of time to prepare. Um, but we decided to take advantage of the opportunity and um, go ahead and book him for that evening. And then we received some help from um, Communities Promoting Health Coalition, which is a, a regional organization through PROP that received some funding through grants from the state. Um, so we got some help with advertising and did send home um, a mailing to all high school families and, and I believe eighth grade families um, in the form of a postcard inviting parents to the event. Um, but ha at any rate, had gone out on a limb because we weren't sure what kind of a response we were going to get. And we did have um, probably close to 200 people attend that evening, so that was remarkable. Um, Attorney General Rowe spoke, um, he addresses the, the community um, in relation to the surge in general's call to action on um, underage drinking. And he did a brief presentation, about 30 minutes, where he talked about some of the state statistics and um, his own work in the area of substance abuse prevention. Um, and we followed that up with a um, question and answer panel discussion. Chief Williams was there representing the police department, as was Mark Dorval, who's a mem an active member of the HOPE action team. Um, Jeff Shedd was there representing school along with Andrea Kayer. Um, Liz Blackwell Moore, who is the uh, woman who heads up the, the re regional group through PROP, was there as well. And so we had a panel with question and answer, and I think all of those folks were able to respond to some questions from the community um, related to different things um, in their area of expertise. And then we went on a real limb, and for the last 15 minutes, we it was set up in a round table format, so we had people sitting around tables in the cafeteria. And one of the big um, goals of HOPE as a group is to get people out there in the community talking. And um, because this is not work that one committee can do, it's not work that one parent can do, it's not work that one school department can do or one police department. It's something that we all need to embrace and work on together. Um, and so we had questions available on the tables and for the last 15 minutes of the evening we sort of challenged folks at the tables to engage in dialogue uh, relating to those prompts and discussion. And um, there were a couple of folks who skipped out at that point, but most people stayed. And um, most people got involved in, I think, really healthy dialogue and discussion. Um, and, you know, it went on 15, 20 minutes, almost, almost a half an hour longer. So people left the cafeteria taking those conversations out into, into the community, which was exactly our goal in um, planning that event. So we saw that as a success. I did receive some feedback in the form of emails. Um, I've gotten some phone calls, I've spoken to some people around town, um, just in terms of what their impressions of the evening were. Most people's feedback was the best part of the evening was sitting around and talking with people in their community. So, um, you know, I just see that as a tremendous success for our um, action team and hopefully just the beginning of taking this work, uh, moving ahead with this work. Um, so. That's really all I, I have to share about that. Um, we do have um, an upcoming event in December. We've invited Dr. Mark Publicker, who addressed the community at our first contract meeting um, this summer briefly, and he's going to return and um, give a formal presentation um, that will be more scientific and more about the research in terms of the developing brain and the impact that substance use and abuse has um, on kids in that situation. So anyway, that's what we're doing. And uh, it's hard work, but we're committed. <laughs> thank <laughs> so, you very much, Nancy. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. have Wonderful. questions? Great. Thank you.
in the wrong place. Okay, uh, International Visitor Leadership Presentation. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I don't remember the date, was it last week? Last Thursday? Last Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, Meridian International uh, Center had several people here. It was a most impressive day. And I think I would turn to uh, Trish because I think I was there for a lot of it, but I think you were there for all of it. So if you would like to speak on it for a few minutes. I first would like to um, thank Gretchen McNulty and the students in the World Affairs Council at the high school because it was through connections that they have in the state of Maine World Affairs Council that we had the opportunity to host these women. Um, it, wa it was amazing. I, I learned so much. Um, it was a presentation of ten remarkable women from the Middle East who were here um, sponsored I, as a result of this program to come and talk to the kids about um, situations in their, in their countries. And the kids had an opportunity to talk and in, in some cases at the end engage a little bit in conversation. It, it was just really eye-opening. I know a lot of the impressions I had of women and culture and act, political situations in these countries came down as a result of listening to that. Um, I think it was just a, an incredible opportunity for the students that were there. It was unfortunate that it was not more of the students, but my understanding was it came up rather quickly, and it was those classes that happened to have social studies um, scheduled at that point in time. But I think the kids did a great job. They were an excellent audience, and it did was a, an hour-plus presentation. So, um, I, and, and again, thank you to the World Affairs Council under Gretchen's leadership. It was amazing. It was, it was very powerful. It was one woman who spoke when they asked her how they felt about America in her country. And it was really interesting to hear her view of America and how we deal with, with other powers in the world and how we can at times be a very negative force. Yeah, I think so. two things stuck with me and then I'll, I, I'm still thinking about it. Um, one of them I thought that was most impressive when she made the comment on the United States and the impression was the United States is so powerful. If the United States wants war, there is war. If the United States wants peace, there is peace. And that's incredibly powerful. The other thing that I thought was really interesting was when the students were asking about various, what we are, the media here communicates as, or identifies as terrorist groups in those countries, their response was they aren't necessarily terrorist groups. And she made a great analogy to the French resistance during World War II and how those people aren't doing anything different than Hezbollah. And they have been marked as terrorists by the United States and our media here. And yet the French resistance, who were doing the same thing, were hailed as heroes. So it really brought down a lot of, I, I hope the students had an opportunity to talk about it afterwards because it really brought down a lot of um, uh, misperceptions, I guess, that I had Definitely, definitely. It was, an, it was excellent, and uh, I congratulate Cape Elizabeth High School for having this opportunity. I don't think many schools get this opportunity. Right. It was really amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the presentation on that. Okay. Um, you want to keep on going yep. with the November 3rd and 4th staff development? I would talk about uh, yesterday and today. As you know, we did not have classes both days. Uh, the first day, was a full day teacher workshop and the second day today uh, we also use as a full day teacher workshop because of voting at the high school. Uh, from my perspective it is extremely valuable time. Uh, frequently I hear people say we never get a chance to talk K through 12 and we need to have that opportunity. So I worked very hard with the administration to ensure that this did become a K through 12 day with the understanding that on uh, Monday morning there were, there were work sessions that were held in the individual schools around uh, pieces of the puzzle that they needed to work with. Yesterday afternoon, uh, the K through 12 teachers met with us. Uh, each of the administrators has a group who they are working with. Uh, for instance, Jeff Shedd is working with the ELA group, English Language Arts group. Uh, Steve is working with the science group. Tom and uh, John Casey are working with the math group, and I have, <coughs> excuse me, social studies is Troy Henninger. I uh, have all the other groups. I had six groups with me. 
Uh, it was interesting because the six groups that I had have done not an awful lot in curriculum with the exception of the uh, world language group. But I worked with guidance, foreign language, health and phys ed, performing arts in, in, in instrumental and vocal with the arts group and with drama. And so yesterday we met as a full group. We also divided out to do some things there. Today we did both the full group and smaller groups. Um, from my perspective, I think it was extremely valuable. I think in anything you do like this, you have layers of interest from people who are extremely interested and ready to roll. There are people who are ready to pay attention and work with us and work ahead. And there are some people who are absolutely petrified. But I think through the process, number one, we gave K through 12 people an opportunity to talk with each other. We also gave levels an opportunity to talk and work with each other. And then we returned at the end to see where we were basically to develop both the learning goals and also the templates and begin that process or continue in that process or revise that process according to what the group was. Uh, I, think it was I think it was an excellent opportunity. We will meet again as a K through 12 group. I didn't bring the date with me, but I think it's in April and uh, or could be March. And so we will uh, then return to that piece. In the meantime, I will be using staff development money to ensure that we move ahead so that eventually we will have a curriculum instruction and assessment program in every academic field and every support field in the school system. And every one of those will be brought back to you as board members to review, uh, to discuss, to ask questions, and eventually to accept the final documents so that we will have a full program. And the baseline of the program is we are looking at what is best for educating our young people. And I think the other piece, which is a very important piece, is where we are as far as programming in Cape Elizabeth and what we can do both financially and support-wise to ensure we're doing the very best job we can. So I, I'm extremely pleased. I'm sure you would find some people who would say they didn't get a lot out of it, but I think you'll find a majority of people, and I think I was surprised with my own people who had so many different things to do and what positive response I got back from almost every single one of them. So it's been a good two days. Thank you, Alan. Um, moving on, Richmond Island. Uh, yes. You have in front of you uh, Scott Shea's request. It is an annual request. And this is his Richmond Island Education and, and uh, Cooperative Education Program. It is done with the towns of Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough, the Coast Guard, uh, the Marine Patrol and the Civil Air Patrol. Again, it's a daytime process. It isn't one that requires your, your approval. But again, I feel so strongly that you need to know that it's happening. And so if you look at this, it is dated for November 10th and 11th uh, at uh, Richmond Island. And uh, everything I have heard about it has told me it's an extremely successful program and very exciting. And as we're building the phys ed, curriculum piece. This is a part of that curriculum piece for the high school. Great. Questions? No? Uh, moving on um, to uh, retirement. Uh, the, next, the next piece I have is the retirement of one of our bus drivers. This is the second one for December. I brought one to you last month. This is Judy Gray. Uh, she is informing us that she will be done as of December 31st, 2008. Uh, she will be retiring from the school system so that in the next few weeks we are going to be working to hire two new bus drivers uh, to pick up in January for bus driving. And uh, we will miss both of these bus drivers yeah. as they leave us. Yep. We've had some long-term folks here. Sure. Done yeah. a terrific sure job. Have. It's amazing. Right. And she's amazing. definitely one of them. Yep. Yeah. So, um, uh, world language. And that, the last one I just want to remind last uh, board meeting, uh, Trish spoke about the world language uh, lecture series. Uh, she had gone to the first one. I went to the second one. It was amazing. It brings in people both from Cape Elizabeth and towns around us who have moved here from other countries and talks about their life. The next one is on November 20th, and I would recommend anyone that can go to go because it is a, a, a wonderful learning experience. And so I just wanted to be sure that people remembered that that is coming on the 20th. Great. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, moving on to new business. Um, 
we would have consideration of superintendent's recommendation for the high school athletic position mm -hmm. for 2008-2009 and I would ask the school board if they would separate out the first request from the rest of them as I have an extended family member who is there um, so maybe I would ask Trish to um, deal with the first item and then I can do the rest if you, could, if you folks don't mind separating out that first. No. Okay, no. so um, you would, I, would, I move that we um, approve the superintendent's recommendation for high school athletic positions with the exception of the boys basketball coach? Yes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, discussion? No? All in favor? Four zero. And now if you would take the first one. Um, yes, I would move that we um, approve the superintendent's recommendation for the varsity boys basketball coach as presented. Second. And I will let you take the rest of it, Trish. Um, all those in favor? I will recuse myself. Peter? Can three people come Yes, out? he three. did. Yes. Three. I think what we need to talk about quickly is, is that a legal vote? That's what I'm wondering. Three people out of six. No. Yes, because we had a quorum when we began a four members. Okay, so you're comfortable with that? As long as you're all comfortable, I'm comfortable with that. I just want to be absolutely sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for accommodating me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for middle school athletic positions for 2008-2009. And they, you again have a list on the front of five people, and on the, on the next page you have a list of another five people. That includes our indoor track, uh, Nordics, skiing, basketball, and swim team. I don't know if you have any questions about any of those or not. They are all, uh, not, they are all positions that have already been there, and none of them are new hires. They are all people who have been there before. Okay, great. Do, is there a motion? I move that we approve the superintendent's um, recommendation for middle school athletic positions as presented. Thank you, Trish. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Discussion? All in favor? 4-0. Great. Um, Trish, moving on to consideration of the following policies for second reading. Yes, um, there were no comments on at the first reading and no changes at the policy committee meeting on the, the following policies. So I will, I think what I'll do is present them um, in, individually or in, in their entirety, individually. Um, I propose or I um, move that we approve policy JFAB admission of non-resident students as presented. Do you, want, do you want to take them individually? Um, does anyone have any issues or questions? I have no issues. Comments? Okay, so I will keep going and I guess change my motion. I would move that we approve the following policies um, as presented for second reading. JFAB, admission of non-resident students. JJH, interrupted study. JK, student discipline. JKA, corporal punishment, which is recommended for deletion. JKE, expulsion of students, JKD, suspension of students, and JB, education, equal educational opportunities, which is also um, recommended for deletion. Okay. And Linda, do you want to still? Second. Okay. Great. Discussion? Questions? All in favor? For zero. Okay. Um, there are several policies being presented for first reading. Um, the first one is JJB, School Sponsorship of Social Activities. Um, we've changed this a little bit to uh, using an MSMA guideline and to sort of reflect what our practices have been. The, our existing policy was a little bit vague in terms of what was a school-sponsored activity. Um, any comments or questions on that one? This is just a first reading, so there's no um, voting, and I would encourage anyone who has any comments, if it comes to you after this meeting, um, to let me know or attend the policy committee meeting, which is on Tuesday, November 18th. The next policy is JRA, which is Student Records and Retention. This is pretty much all driven by current law. 
There are several guidelines that uh, um, relate to that, JRAE, Student Records and Retention Guidelines, and JRA-R, um, which is notification. The last policy being pre presented for first reading is JLCC, which is Communicable Diseases. Our nursing staff has reviewed this. This is their recommendation that they presented to the policy committee. It is also um, very much influenced by legal and state law, um, and I think the, current, the policy as presented reflects that. Any comments? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Trish. Okay, um, committee reports. Does anybody have an important committee report that they feel they should share? Yes? Um, just to let people know, this is sort of a policy committee report. The thank to Gary, we have the, um, a survey on the school website on the policy, the substance abuse policy, it sort of dovetails in with the conversations about, around hope. Uh, because the policy has been in place for three years, one of the things we talked about was when we created the policy was that we would sort of take, review it after a certain period of time. We would welcome or encourage any community members, including probably high school students, to take that survey. It is online. It's accessible on the school website right on the home page. I'm guessing that survey will be up probably for a couple weeks. And once we take a look at the results, um, the policy committee will look at the results and sort of come up with a step two if, if that's necessary. So I would encourage everyone to, anyone who's interested, to take that survey. It's a, it's a quick one. There's only 10 questions. Great. Thank you, Trish. Anybody else? Okay. Actually, yeah. I'm wondering, should I, um, the information on the various strategic planning, the new board member, just to remind, um, I'm not sure we know who our new, what our board is going to be, but on this, the strategic planning committee met um, last week, I think, and we did set Friday, November 14th at 8 o'clock for a new board member orientation training, um, but it's open to all board members. It'll be done by Drummond and Woodsum, and it's a great reminder of sort of what our roles and responsibilities are, and um, a tentative date in December for a sort of goal-setting um, workshop for the, the board members, sort of taking, continuing on what we had done in January, but sort of look at with the new board and what some of the DLT work has took place over the summer to sort of see if we can gel and spend some time working on that. Great. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. That's it. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um, public comment on agenda items. I don't see any. Um, school board agenda requests. No? Uh, announcement of upcoming meetings. I'll, I'll go through it because I think there's a couple of maybe changes. Um, the extracurricular committee is meeting tomorrow morning at 730 right. in the Jordan Conference Room. There is not a finance committee meeting tomorrow morning, Wednesday. Oh, right. That says Wednesday, November 6th, so it's... Oh, it's Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday. 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 It is Thursday. Thursday the 6th. Right? Thursday. At 8 o'clock, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next school board, um, there is a special meeting, as you just mentioned, on Friday, November 14th at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the Jordan Conference Room. That is with, is that with Drummond and Woodson? Yes. Okay. Um, calendar committee, Thursday, November 6, 3.15, correct? Mm -hmm. um, the Madden Conference Room. Policy committee, Tuesday, November 18th at 12 noon. School board meeting, the next regular school board meeting will be Tuesday, December 2nd at 7 o'clock in the council chambers. Personnel committee is meeting Thursday, November 13th at 8 o'clock, Jordan Conference. Yes. Wellness Committee, um, Monday, December 1st, 315 Fire Station. Do we know if that's correct? No idea. We'll assume it is, unless we've heard otherwise. And the School Board Meeting Workshops. Tuesday, November 18th is about athletics. Tuesday, December 16th is about goal setting. Tuesday, January 27th is about technology. And all of those are at 7 o'clock at the high school library. Is there anything that anybody wants to add? Don't missing anything? Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. In record time, I move that we <laughs> call adjourn. Thank Second. you, Trish. Thank you, Linda. Uh, all in favor? Or zero? <laughs>